the Supreme Court ruled today that Donald Trump could stay on the ballot. And no, I think, I think that was important. We don't ever want some elected official in a state or anybody else saying who can and can't be on a ballot. This is America. This is America. Look, I'll defeat Donald Trump fair and square, but I want him on that ballot. That was Nikki Haley in Texas yesterday weighing in on the Supreme Court ruling that Donald Trump can stay on Colorado's primary ballot. Joining us now, national political reporter for The Washington Post, Hannah Knowles. Hannah, good to see you this morning. So you've got a new piece uh, that has the headline, Trump poised to dominate Super Tuesday as Haley makes her last stand. So let's start there with Haley. She has, uh, throughout this process, vowed to stay in through Super Tuesday. Super Tuesday has arrived. She's not expected to win many, if any, contests today. So if that's the case, what happens to her next? That is the question. Um, I think there are a lot of people who think, you know, maybe she could drop out um, pretty soon after this, um, but she hasn't announced anything. So what are her sources, what are her advisors saying in terms of, you know, it's a truism, right, that, that these campaigns, they, don't, they stay afloat as long as they have the money to do so. Uh, we know some of her big donors have backed away, but does she have enough cash to keep going for a while were she to choose to? That is the interesting thing, right? I mean, she, uh, a number of people have made that point. Usually the campaign would run out of money at this point, and, and Nikki Haley still has donors who, you know, they want to see her fight and they want to see her sort of carry the banner for that old guard, like Reagan wing of the party that's still around despite the Trump um, takeover. But it, I just, I can't imagine what uh, she would gain from going further at this so point. So what would be the rationale if she were to go forward, right? That, you know, the, we know that Trump's criminal trial, the one in New York, starts in now under three weeks. Is the idea of that she could just stay around just in case something were to happen there or some other sort of unexpected event that could derail Trump? Um, there is a case for, you know, stick around and collect delegates um, as long as you can to be sort of that person who could swoop in if something happens. But that's also looking less and less likely, right? Because we're seeing that we might not have, um, you know, a lot of these trials could get delayed until after the election. And so it's looking less likely that Trump could have that moment of legal derailment. So, Hannah, you've been writing about how Haley, though she's only won the one contest, the one in Washington, D.C., she's put up pretty good numbers in others. She's pulled in a significant percentage of the vote in some contests. I'm thinking Iowa. I'm thinking New Hampshire. I'm thinking particularly South Carolina. Talk to us, if you will, about the implications for what that could mean for Republicans and namely Donald Trump's success in November. Yeah, so she'll point out that her, her best showing so far was in New Hampshire. She got 43 percent. And that's not, you know, a tiny minority is what she says. And she says that this is a sign that Donald Trump has work to do if he wants to win over that part of the party, and particularly independents and college-educated um, voters. But at the same time, it actually looks like the Republican coalition is more united right now behind Trump um, than the Democratic coalition is behind Biden. Um, and so, you know, even though Biden is cruising in the primary, um, he kind of in some ways has more to be nervous about right now. So talk to us a little bit more about Trump, some of the vulnerabilities that Republicans, those, those who support Haley and those that don't, see as potential liabilities for the former president in November. Um, well, they would point to the, the 91 felony charges against him. They would point to just what he says um, every day. I mean, this is not someone who is has the posture of, I am trying to unite the big tent Republican Party. I mean, every day he says stuff that alienates um, a certain group. Yeah, we just discussed with our last guest, Susan Del Percio, about how he says he doesn't want the Mitt Romney or his supporters. Well, those are exactly the kind of votes you need in a, what will be a tight, tight election. National political reporter for The Washington Post, Hannah Knowles, thank you so much for joining us this morning on this Super Tuesday. And of course, we'll have complete coverage all day long and tonight of the election results, an important moment here in the 2024 campaign.